Hello, 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 and welcome to the No Faces Comic Chat. I'm a little bit Ask You here, but your Ask You host is uh, Bubs Comics, and with me, as always, the great knowledge, the mind that cannot be beat. He he's a, he's one part Mega Mind, one part Mastermind, and all parts Master Mold. We have Metarog. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. Um that alliterative uh, introduction uh, but uh, i guess thank you um, uh, you're welcome <laughs> great great to be here with you and the uh, other co-hosts once again i'm you know we, we we skip weeks and whenever that happens you know it's just i'm out of sorts so uh this week my, my wife is can be can take consolation i will be you know even keeled Nice. We like that. We like a nice even keeled Roger. We've seen that Meta Rock guy, and uh, he's he's a bit much for us all to handle there. Uh, with, with us, generally, as always, fresh from the Walmart parking lot, scraping for change and trying to sell his slightly used pantaloons, DS Comics. What is up? Good to be back. I, I feel the same as Roger. Something has been off for a week or so, and now we're back, so everything's back to normal. We love being back to normal, but every now and then we got to get them to Abby normal and invite one of our favorite co-hosts, Jambo Comics. Hey guys, how's everybody tonight? Mm -hmm. hey. Way to keep the energy up there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll start out slow and we'll end strong, man. Yeah, I'm sure that's how they like it. Hey, all right, good deal. I tell you, too, uh, whenever we got uh, an extreme four-member panel, we get the patented Kawamai Bunga. Kawabunga! There we go. Four panelists. Woohoo! All right. All right, we did it. We did our little foam suits. You think that even made a sound? Like, what's the sound of four foam hands clapping? Uh, I, I don't think there is one. <laughs> that was it. Just there. That was that it. Was weird. <laughs> that was a live recording. Uh, so we got uh, in the chat. Oh, my gosh. These people are coming in hard. They're coming in heavy. But we're just glad they're coming. Uh, Roger, why don't you tell us uh, all the fine folks we have in the chat? It's it's more than I can count on account of me only having uh, 10 fingers and toes. <laughs> Absolutely. My pleasure. Uh, in, and usually he's real early. Las Cruces. 1971. I'm assuming from New Mexico. I'm assuming that's um, his birth year too, or it could uh, be the he, first birth yeah, of his first grandkid. He's a young know. young man. He's a young man. Yeah, and of course, all the way across the pond, the the legend himself, the man with the beard that just won't quit, the gray man himself, uh, and the man behind the eternal My Light project, <laughs> none other than James, who has again a complete atlas seaboard collection like myself and is always here he's just a loyal loyal listener and watcher speaking of loyal we have a from up there in the canadian rockies no canadian <laughs> the mountains up there mike we have area 51 um, be beautiful scenery where he drives over to those shops and things um and then my buddy from over on i believe long island jason from heroes to icons Great. He just sent me a uh, nice video on Instagram. What a great community we have here, man. Look, coffee at seven at eight thirty says, You ain't lying. <laughs> coffee at eight thirty. <laughs> oh man. Then we got, of course, Unruly Simeon, one of my graders notes, compadres, and again, ubiquitous chat member. And one of the most knowledgeable of all our chat members, Ranger Sly who's always in our streams. He's always there ready to fill in and give us some good info. Uh, Bill is in here, my my compadre from yesterday's live stream when we really dissected a lot of Johnny Storm's first few appearances. Slim Comics and more is here, just back from a haul that he just got on his channel. And Captain Comics, of course, your, your buddy over there, Jambo, from the Cover Slingers. And yeah. let's see who Ahoy, else mate. Hmm? <laughs> Ahoy, mates. Ahoy, yeah. Ahoy, mates and, and mermaids. Yeah, that's... Uh, <clears throat> of course, we got Jackson Roy Kirk, another chat superstar. Wait, unless his, unless his internet... Down, 
I got to catch this before it disappears. A dollar for each boob on the panel. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. A little does he know Roger has a third nipple, so technically I'm only half a boob. Yeah, but that's that's the that's my mutant uh, part. You know, that's my mutation. <laughs> uh, Seawater19 is in here, all the way from Indiana. One of the best on YouTube. Very knowledgeable as well. And I think we got everybody, Bob. I believe. I'm sorry, I, I got distracted. <laughs> he was distracted. I was distracted. Well, that's that doesn't take much, you know what I mean? Thank you. I, I know, I know. She overdid it. But uh, <laughs> and let me. Uh, where's uh, Where's Seawood? I don't see Seawood. <coughs> I don't even think he's here. There he is. <laughs> oh, he's here. He's here. Welcome all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate you joining us on this here, the final episode of the No Faces comic chat for this week. So <laughs> <laughs> I may be altering the thumbnail to slip in a little clickbait, but uh, we're going to go with that. Uh, I also <laughs> wanted to say a very special uh, shout out to, uh, well, he needs no introduction, but but I really want to say thank you to uh, Comic Mag Musings for, for being so kind to us every week. You really don't have to do that. He single-handedly paid for uh, for our uh, high-tech stream abilities for about four months. So <laughs> it's really, wow. you really don't have to do that, uh, but we want to thank you, give you a special thank you, and also for that exhaustively referenced uh, comment you left on Jambo's video earlier this <laughs> evening, uh, I can only imagine how many Google tabs he had open while trying to make sure he spelled all those uh, uh, historical references correctly. So that, that, that was you. that was one of the best comments of all time. You okay. got my wife laughing. Of too. All it's time. <laughs> if you haven't seen Jambo's video today, you got to go see it first of all and check out Bill's comment. You yes. will be on the floor. It was great. It what was a, funny. What a rascal. As they say. <laughs> what a rascal. We got uh, Jeff Schultz is in the house as well. One love from Chicago, as they say. Chicago. Uh, that's where he's from. Where the dishes are deep and so's the uh, the, the the dishes. Uh, so we got, uh, let's see, Metarog. He has got a ton of comics up there. I think he's ready for the chat. But before we get to that, Jambo, we're putting old Jambo on the spot. Old oh, man no. Jamie, let oh, us no. know what is our team name this evening. Uh, alter egos, side jobs. Shit, that was three weeks ago combined with four weeks ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> try again. Uh, don't quit your day job. That's close enough. I know <laughs> DS doesn't know. It, but we'll go with DS. Do you remember the accurate name of our team tonight? The Day Trippers. Shit. There you go. That's that's it. Roger. Huh? What? <laughs> oh, we are the wait. The even uh, he doesn't know it. <laughs> the day job quitters, I think. Oh day job yeah. quitters. I was close. Yeah, we were all very close. Yeah. If you hadn't quit, I'd have fired you. Uh, <laughs> day job quitters. And the reason we're the day job quitters is because our topic for this evening, we're going back to Jambo. He knows it this time. What's the topic? Uh, day job quitters. Mm. That's right. So uh, the day job quitters. And our topic this evening is is don't uh, superheroes uh, day jobs. What, what do they do for a living kind of thing? Hmm. Because, you know, the bad guys... They make a living pretty easy. They rob, they steal, they cheat, and then they get caught by the good guys, and then they get put away and then miraculously escape uh, and, you know, and continue to do it. So that's that's their that's their job. Uh, usually they don't have too many side jobs, although a few of them do, I suppose. We can explore that of the third hour. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but before that, I just want to throw out, and I had a question too. So... Sensational She-Hulk. We all know She-Hulk is a lawyer by day and She-Hulk by other parts of the day. But is, what's interesting is that she doesn't have an alter ego, right? She's always She-Hulk, right? Like everyone knows Jennifer Walters is She-Hulk, don't they? Pretty much. I think it's yeah. pretty much common knowledge, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not right. a secret identity, yeah. Right, it's not a secret identity, but she still keeps a day job. 
So I thought that's interesting for her because a lot of them have a secret identity that has the day job, and that's why they have it, you know, so they can stay out and do things. And I had a question for you, Roger. Mm. Ghost Rider, the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider, did he he did he remain being a stuntman very long? Yeah, um, he actually th- uh, threw about about a, he was a stunt writer in a show for a while. And then uh, when he became the Ghost Rider, he, he, it was tough to keep that schedule. So he, uh, yeah, he became a stuntman in L.A. Uh, for about a year, I, I think. Yep. Yep. So there you go. Yep. So he stayed. So he had a job as a stuntman, yep. and it was a job he had before he he uh, went propositioning the devil, which is going to be <laughs> DS Comics' new hit single, uh, his forty-five <laughs> vinyl coming out next month. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so anyway uh so those are my two upfront picks uh two two jobs that they're that they took and i'd like to go through a couple of characters we can think of talk about the jobs that they kept as day jobs and then see if we can find some of the more common ones some of the threads going on through some of these looks like roger is loaded for bear so no problem there let's go straight to ds comics <laughs> yeah, I really don't have a lot of like superheroes to show, but there's um, you know, that one comment here from um Ranger Sly. I really like the superheroes who have like their alter ego, their day job is just like they're rich, they're, like Tony Stark. His day job is like running a massive company and doing tech and all this other stuff. Um, I think those count as day jobs, but it's really cool when they're um getting down and dirty as a superhero and then they're millionaires uh, or own companies in the background, you know, Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark are the two that come to mind. So those, those are always cool ones. And then it seems like there's a lot of heroes that work in the media. I don't know why that is, but they're either reporters or photographers or, you know what I mean? It seems like there's a lot that work in the media. It's kind of, kind of a strange thing. Well, they have access to information that way. Right. Yeah. 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 Back in the day, right? That was back in the day. Yeah. Uh, now they're getting their their news from the other sources that everybody else gets them from. They just package them with more money. Uh, I think that one of the things about you said that they're in the media kind of thing, and it, it makes me think of like Lifetime movies. I don't know, or like better yet, I don't like Lifetime movies, but I you do like a lot of those, Bob. I do like Hallmark movies because they're okay. <laughs> the Lifetime movie is like I was sleeping with my brother's uh, girlfriend's uh, husband's cousin and I didn't know he was an axe murderer. That's more Lifetime stuff, right? <laughs> but the uh, the Hallmark stuff is, you know, guy in a flannel shirt at the ranch, you know, the old business and, you know, this high powered media type person runs in. She's a PR person. It's always some crap like that. Like basically the, the job responsibility of every woman in a lifetime in a, in a Hallmark movie is to be able to work from her bed with a laptop. <laughs> like as long as she can lay to half lay down in bed with a laptop in her lap and be working, then that's it. You know, and I know, I know Jambo's known a few girls who work from their laptop in bed, but that's different. That's different. <laughs> We're not talking about that kind of work. Those are more late evening jobs, not day jobs. But uh, but it seems like that's a thing. So like a lot of those movies, they'll be bloggers. Like, well, I'm a blogger. I'm like, what the hell? Who makes money doing that crap? That's like saying you're a YouTuber. No offense, Bueller, wherever you're at. But <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you couldn't make it this evening. <laughs> but you know, that's. I just think that it's it's different. You know, it's like they're not even real jobs for for half those things. So at least back in the day, being a news reporter. I think was a more real job than it is today. You know, today it's a lot of crap, but I think back then it it was, you were a nerve center of information. Yep. Correct. All right. Well, poor Rogers. uh, I'm sure he's got this all strung up on some sort of long box. So (laughs) yeah, (laughs) sure. I have have all the daytime professions, you know, sorted out, you know, from all my rest of my stuff. Wow. All right. Well, we better give him a break and let's let's go to Jambo Comics. All right. Well, (laughs) this guy right here, he was a news publisher. His alter ego, Britt Reed, uh, owned a newspaper. And so, yeah, that was his day job. Fought crime at night as the Green Hornet. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that was a good source to get all your, uh, you know, 
all your scuttlebutt was through your reporters and stuff like that. It worked now let's do the family show, Jambo. You're gonna have to clean it up a little bit, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess that was a big one. I mean, you had Peter Parker also. Oh yeah. So that's right. I forgot about him. Yeah, he had a day job at a newspaper. So, so newsman. And remember, remember when they switched uh, uh, Clark Kent from being a newsman to a news anchor? Yes. Remember he was a news anchor for a while? That was weird. Yep. Yeah, in the 70s and 80s, I think. Yep. yep. Yeah. Totally, mm-hmm. totally changed things. Oh, yeah, the old s- circus trapeze artist. But did Dick Grayson, I, did he remain a high wire man during that time or did he quit? Once he became um, Bruce's ward, I don't know. Yeah, I, know. I would think he quit, right? I would I think, think he'd he quit, quit, but because his his whole family died and they were part of the act, mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah. And Dead Man was in the circus too, wasn't he? Uh, sort of like an acrobat. Um, yeah. Well. Yep. And yeah, he was so shot. Really performance, performance, I think. Yeah. Yeah, a couple circus related day jobs. That's cool. Yep. Look at that. I, I, original I Green don't know if Lantern I put that a as a day job, but yeah, okay. I guess it's a job. Yeah. I didn't know Green Lantern was a train engineer. That makes more sense about the lantern, at least. The the Alan Scott one was. Right. Yeah. Hmm. He's missing from my from my golden age uh DC group. I don't have a golden age Green Lantern appearance. Not on a mm-hmm. cover. Not I many do. I mean, well, they're they're not that great, most of them. <laughs> and I and I refuse to settle for a comic cavalcade where he's like cutting a turkey open with a spoon or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of those actually. I narrowly <laughs> avoided that in a trade, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have got I that, that man. So. Up at some point, Jim. <laughs> If you're on a limited budget, though, and you want some big name heroes from the Golden Age and the Golden Age comics, you can grab Comics Cavalcade uh, or World's Finest. Those uh, off-key, non-key, those are they're really affordable, and they're 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 cool. I mean, they have their charm. Uh, the covers are not spectacular, that's for sure. But Bub's no, but Human they, Fly, Comic Cavalcade. They certainly do have good value for seasonal decorating. Because yeah. almost every holiday in the Judeo-Christian calendar is represented in a comic cavalcade cover. Yes, that's very true. So yep. if you like to yep. decorate for the holidays mm-hmm. and you're a DC fan and you're a Golden Age fan and you don't mind a little bit of cranberry sauce getting stuck in your 1951 book, comic cavalcade for you. I have a yeah, spring I mean, cleaning cover where they're spring cleaning. Yeah. Nice. They got a rug outside and dusting it off and everything. So, yeah. That's the only one that I like. (laughs) (laughs) If you have to, let me know. And Marvel didn't do really, Marvel didn't really do, we're talking like Golden Age. DC did holiday covers all the time on almost all their titles. Mm -hmm. Um, Not all of them, but a lot of them. And then, like, uh, Timely Comics, I don't think there's a single, single holiday cover. Uh, in most of the timely runs, except for the kitty ones, like the funny animals. That's it. Well, you yeah. woke up nights of old now, so he's going to be looking. He's going <laughs> to dig through his remaining short box of comics. He's going to push over about sixteen robot toys, and uh, he's going to. Well, there he is. Smooth. Yeah, like dude, Marvel though they left the holidays for the the kitty stuff, where DC put it up front on the big hero books. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I've never really considered that before, but that's definitely true. Yep. Uh, there, there might be one with like a Christmas tree on Rockefeller Center or something in the background, but yeah, not not purposefully. Uh, I don't think they did, did any Christmas special. Yeah, Christmas. I can't think of a, a big name Marvel or timely hero from the Golden Age that is on a Christmas cover. Um, but there's nope. some timely books with Christmas covers, like Funny Animals or something like that. Yep. Yep. But I can think of I can think of numerous ones for Batman, for Superman. Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman. I mean, they're just all over the place in the Golden Age. Yeah, yeah that's true. Right. Yeah, that is true. Now we had some of the Treasury editions of Marvel. Of course, that's not Golden Age, but later on, you definitely do have quite a bit of Marvel. You know, holiday fun. It's just not that far back. Yeah, not that far. No, not in, not until the Silver Age. Yeah. Look at Ranger Sly. Little known fact: the Legion. Oh, look, the, he's getting he's getting lazy on us. 
the original <laughs> Legion of Superheroes, but he included the hyphen. I'm so perplexed. All had paper routes or they sold grit. And Mike says he sold grit for a while. And uh, so now, now I go back cover ads. So now we have to ask, what the hell's grit? Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's a newspaper. It was a newspaper, yeah. Yep. I never heard of it. What's the difference uh, between if, selling if, grit if, and having a paper route? You have to, you have to read the the back issue ads in Bronze Age comics and interior ads to see grit. There's a guy, and he says, if you sell so many of this, then you get these prizes. Oh boy, I've seen them, but I've never actually read them. But yeah, it was a newspaper. Grit. I remember. Uh, in I've the read 80s, them. I've read them. In the eighties, I remember wanting. It was so stupid because I lived on the fifteenth floor of an apartment building in New York city. And I really, really, really wanted the jet ski. I wanted to <laughs> sell whatever the hell they told me to sell to get that jet ski. I have no oh, idea where man. I would have put it or where I would have wrote it or anything, but I wanted that jet ski so bad. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Just you, You'd have to sell like a hundred thousand issues to get that. <laughs> I know it never happened, but Hey, Grails anonymous is out there now. So yeah, it's, <laughs> Work up the Bub Comics uh, uh, jet ski fund. I uh, wouldn't blame you one bit. <laughs> anyway, all right. So finally, poor Rogers waited all this time <laughs> for his turn. That's what happens when we got the old foursome in effect. But Roger, no you want to go through some of those? Sure, sure. I'll I'll, right. I'll I'll put out a few professions that haven't been mentioned yet. In all fact, right, I'll put works. it out there. See if you guys can figure it out. How's that? Oh, I um, love games inside of games. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here. Show within a Jefferson show. Jefferson Pierce. What was his profession? Pole dancer. <laughs> no. Electrician. Nope. Uh, lifeguard. Nope. Oh, look at that. All right, we got to show this now. Sorry, Roger. Your game's been canceled. <laughs> <You're it. laughs> he, he, was, he was a high school teacher. Oh. Uh. Oh, nice. Look at yep. that. He was, high, he was also an All Olympian, right, yeah. ex-Olympian, but he was a high school teacher. So eh, I stuck the band on that one. Yeah, I, I, right. I didn't bring my... Uh, All band. right. In this era of Miss Marvel, what was Carol Danvers? Pole dancer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to have a hard no on all these professions on pole dancers, uh, Bub. So hey, gotta change your tune a bit. We don't know until you pull out the comic whether it's true or not. <laughs> Just because uh, she's pole, got a bare midriff does not mean that she operator. is an exotic dancer. Pole, okay? uh, maybe she worked for the telecommunications company of the day, and she was a Bell South. She's working for Bell South, and she was a pole climber. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, a pole, not a pole. Well, climber. you you were you were kind of going toward the 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 realm of where she was. She's working, a phone operator. Off at the end she was a no. she was a phone operator. No. Oh man, <laughs> switchboard, switchboard. Close. You know. No. Nope. Uh, secretary. No. Nope. Uh, hmm. Hairstylist to the stars. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> are we talking about Carol Danvers? Yeah. Yeah. She was a pilot. Yeah, true, but at, during this era, what was she doing? Pole dancing. Look, how many times do <laughs> we have to say the same thing, Roger? I think that All was right. Dazzler, bub. She, she was the editor of a woman's magazine. Oh, uh, a fem mm. mag, huh? Yep. Mm, two for two. Yeah. Two for One two. One of those fem mags. I think it was called Rag on the Rags. Uh, right. That was during the, <laughs> what, the late 70s? Yeah. Yeah, late yep. 70s. Um, they did a lot of uh, um, women's advancement in comics in the 70s. Remember Wonder Woman getting all liberated in the yep. 70s, too? Changed right. life. It became like a go-go dancer type look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have some interesting experiments that Marvel did in the Marvel and DC did in the late 70s. All right, yep. last, last one. What was Captain America during this era here in the 80s? He was a captain in the U.S. Army. Boom. Nope. Yeah, then why would now Steve Captain? Rogers? Steve Rogers had a profession at this point at this time. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't I'm gonna go on a ledge and say I don't think he was a pole dancer. <laughs> okay, Mike Knights of old nailed it. He was a, a an artist. 
He was uh, uh, he did advertising. He even did strips and things like that. He was an artist. That's cool. Well, you were close, Bob. He did strips. <laughs> <laughs> Not strips. <laughs> strips. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Wow. I'm with you. You you. <laughs> You guys, I tell you, Bob, Bob just drags us all down into the into the basement of the gutter, doesn't he? You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> everybody floats down here. Oh. <laughs> well, I got more, but I don't want to monopolize everything. So, well, let's, good. Let's, we don't want you to either. <laughs> Poor DS has been waiting to put down whatever side project he's got right next to the microphone, so that he can uh, regale us with the Spectre side profession. Go ahead, DS. Well, I didn't know it, but Gray Man mentioned um, that he was in law enforcement, I think. But well, I wasn't there. Was yes. Yes. He, he, was he wasn't. And, and indeed, Jim Corrigan was a police detective. That's correct. Yeah, and I wasn't aware of that, but Gray Man threw it out there, and I just happened to have it here, so I threw it up. Um, yeah, I was, my side project was I bought this book, and I forgot to look through it and do like page count and resto check, so I just figured I would do that now. Oh, cool. and, yeah, uh, I, I got my X Men 100 that way. Somebody was somebody was in a live auction, and they were showing off the the book. And in the middle of it, somebody wanted to see the page color, and they said, "Let's see the page color." And so they opened up the book and found a coupon cutout. Oh, yeah. and it well, would not I have known. Really, yeah, I looked through all my books. Uh, I you know I don't do like a a page count on a bronze marble book that's in high grade. You know, I'm not page counting it, but you can go through and if you look close to the spine, you can see if the page has been cut out. Uh, it's pretty easy to tell. Um, but yeah, I always look through because there's coupons cut out of these bronze books a lot. And uh, you know, you got to check the staples and check to see if there's color touch or anything. But I'll tell you, I bought this on eBay. I think uh, I think this thing's like a 9.2 or a 9.4. It's pretty nice. And I saw just a 9.2 last night. Like, prices are nuts, as you guys know. I think a 9.2 sold last night for over $1,000 on Heritage. Wow. Yeah, wow. Insane. Wow. I bought this because I figured, hey, it looks like it could be in the nines and it could be like a $400 book. So I'll buy it for 200 or whatever. And what happened to our hobby, guys? I mean, wow. it's crazy. Right? Hope you got all the books you wanted because... Yeah, you're not gonna be able to get none anytime soon. And that's I, that's I got this I'm one doing. too. This one's like a nine six nine eight, and I didn't pay much for this. I didn't realize this thing's going over like over a grand in nine eight. That's, that's crazy, crazy, man. This one too. This is probably a nine six. Hmm. Wow. God. Bought this for a hundred and hundred and ten bucks, I think, something like that. I don't know. Well, wow. to help keep, keep DS on theme, Hulk's day job <laughs> was a scientist slash whatever he could get into at the moment. Spider-Man's day job was a newspaper uh, photographer. And uh, DS's day job is trying to find pants to not wear. <laughs> yeah, that. I have, uh, you know, my one pair of pants is in the laundry right now. So, uh, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my day job. I've actually hold well. down at my day job. It's now a part-time job, so that I have more time to go look for change in the Walmart parking lot <laughs> and look comics. Pro professional scrounger, yeah. and there's more change to be found with all the money floating around. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. Well, good deal. Thank you much. Uh, I think we're up. Uh, technically, we're up to me, but usually when there's four people on the panel, I abstain. So, or I'll, I'll skip a turn or so. Jambo, who do you got? Is that Thor? Thor, had Thor. Don Blake, his alter ego, yeah, was a surgeon doctor. Yeah. I barely knew he had an alter ego. <laughs> yes. 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 Tell you how much Thor I've read. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, when uh, he struck the cane on the ground, became Thor. Yelmer and stuff. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, they're in the early issues of Thor especially, yeah, it was a big part of the storyline was him becoming Don Blake at the most inopportune of moments. You mean he didn't have a choice? Uh, if he stayed away from uh, his hammer for longer than what was it, Roger? 30 seconds or six? Um, yeah, seconds. a minute. A minute is only half. Yeah, 60 seconds. Yeah, 60 he seconds. changed back to his yeah. mortal form of Don Blake. That happens to me yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. To the best of us, I'm afraid. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
I believe it. <laughs> yeah, it was a big part of the storyline in the early stories there and stuff. So yeah. Yep. That's that's some, sometimes that's the only way they could get a, a villain of lesser power to sort of have a chance, and you know. They could keep that hammer away from him, you know. She Ooh. had a kind of different um job, a day yeah, job. Man. It was she was an actress. Yes. A yep. starlet. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood's glamorous detective star, as a matter yeah, of fact. Linda Ama Turner. Amazing that she could find time to do crime fighting after yeah. that career. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't have a lot of social media back then. So, yeah, she probably had a little bit more time than the actresses of today and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> she didn't have the active uh, multi account Instagram that DS has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Harley Quinn was a psychiatrist. That's true. Yeah. Yep. All right, Roger. We're who's ready to play Rogers Delve into Obscura, <laughs> Stump the Chumps, and everyone's a chump. Stump the chumps. Take it away, Roger. <laughs> oh man. Well, I I I I think I've I've done the stump the chump thing, but I did want to show a few that haven't been mentioned yet. Um Daredevil was a criminal defense mm -hmm. attorney. Or, mm -hmm. you know, during his whole career, as far as I remember. Um, yes. Now, how how he could, I, I don't know, he must have had some kind of incredible um, way of being able to represent his clients without actually studying, because at night, he was always adventuring. So Foggy. Foggy did all the work. Oh, Foggy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Foggy was the so, research guy. He, he, was just, he was just the guy who showed up in court, you know. So would you rather have... Daredevil as your lawyer or Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk? I think Jennifer Walters, because as long as she finds me guilty, I still win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, just say it out loud. Who would you rather uh, who would you rather have get you off? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Daredevil, I wasn't good. <laughs> oh, I'm just of the crime, you understand. I, look, I can't oh, do nah. too much. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Sorry, Roger. Sorry, Andrew. No, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm. I have my glasses off here, and I'm like trying to <laughs> compose myself. <clears throat> <laughs> all right, who's all next, right. Rod? <clears throat> all right, let, all right. Here, let, let's go. Let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. Okay, Spider Woman, Jessica Drew. <laughs> Work for Hydra. <laughs> No, yep, she, true, true. She she had like six jobs. Oh, she, oh, right, <laughs> right. Well, tell me, tell PI. me one or two. She was a PI for a minute. Yep. She was a secretary. Yep. She spy. Was definitely yep. a spy. Yeah. Yep. Oh man, they like every three issues they changed her job. <laughs> and not <laughs> only did they change her job, but they didn't. They never wove into the plot that her job changed. It was just like in the introduction, Jessica Drew on her way to her exciting career as a yeah. secretary. And like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that kind of a trick question here, right? Because it, pretty much any answer would work. She she did all kinds of stuff: bounty hunting. She 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 did um, private detective. So you're, you're saying she, she did, couldn't hold a job down, then is what you're saying. Well, yeah. She even she even like did bartending. For a while, I mean. Just oh, finally, true, we found a pole dancer. The true. <laughs> no, no, she did not do exotic dancing. He's a tiny dancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there you go. Uh, I think I think she was also like a lab <laughs> assistant for a while with her father. If I'm, or maybe I'm misremembering her. Wasn't how she got her powers though? Yeah. You know yeah. who I'm thinking of? Cheetah, though. Uh, oh, Cheetah. Not cheetah, black, black no, tigra, uh, tigra, 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 tigra. Yeah, yeah. Tigra, yeah. tigra had that issue, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, let's see. All right, you got any more there, Roger? That's only two. You said a few. Okay, well, one more, one more. That doesn't count. Denny Colt, the spirit. He wore the same suit for both jobs. He just put a little black around his eyes. <laughs> Essentially, you're right. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Essentially, you're right. Essentially, you're right. There's no phone booth action, nothing. He just walked right no. around. Just no, no phone little, booth action. For... Put a little grease around his eyes and got to work. Man. <laughs> this is a lazy no, man's no, costume. Yeah, right. Is that what you're saying, Bob? Oh, uh, yeah. 
that's my new inspiration for uh, next Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> DS, oh, you like DS? Yeah, I've just got some other stuff going on, so I'm sort of listening. I don't really know off the top of my head a lot of day jobs I'm thinking of, so I'm. Um, I don't know. I'm enjoying listening, and I got some other stuff going on. So, All right. Well, he, he was he was like he was a detective too. I didn't believe in his day job. So, um, <laughs> that that might have changed at some point. But oh I think when I was when I read it, it was a detective. Uh, I think like a more like a what do you call it? Like a CSI guy, maybe? Uh, no, no, that's not true. So this no, this comment true. needs to be recognized because only the uh, there's a league cadre of comic collectors who would uh, would get the the fuller brush salesman reference. Uh, <laughs> so for those of you who don't know and just want to know a little bit but not too much, uh, Fuller Brush Man was a lead character of a risque uh, Tijuana Bible comic. That uh, he would his exploits, if you could imagine, were similar to those of Penthouse Letters, and he basically went door to door selling the Fuller Brush. And uh, of course, as you can imagine, he came upon many a lady who wanted more than just his bristles. So there you go. That's a Fuller Brush man. All right. All okay. Life. Well, mm -hmm. that's that is that's some information I never wanted to know about. Thank you. <laughs> I'll send you a copy in the mail. <laughs> that's all right. My, but my I'll take your word for it. Fuller brush collection. I'll take your word for it. I, I do remember a fuller brush man coming to the door back in the seventies, by the way. And well, you may it was very different from what you just explained. Oh well, anyway. that could be it as, as well. <laughs> Wasn't that character in uh, Cracked or something too, Forbush Man, or was that a Forbush? Yeah, that was yeah, Forbush. and not not Branek and and Crack. Yes. Oh uh, no. Okay. Not Branek. Yeah. Not like he had a he had like this kettle or something on his head. Right. Oh, right. Yep. All right, you done, Roger? For now. Jambo. Yeah, you said it earlier. Bruce Banner, the Hulk, nuclear physicist at daytime. I guess that was his day job before the accident. So I don't know how much time he spends doing that now, but I mean, I guess at one time <laughs> didn't pay off very well for him though. No, no it didn't. Did it? No. no. And guy. we got this guy. <laughs> Can uh, anybody remember his name? Originally, uh, before he became the man thing, T Ted uh, Salas. Very good. I knew no, Rod Toss Salad. <laughs> and, and he was salad? he was a chemist, I do believe, right? Biochemist. Yes, very good. Yeah. Roger's good at this, man. Wow, I tell Can't you, stop he, Roger. I know he's all over the place. He's a he's a veritable uh, cornucopia <laughs> of Denver <laughs> information. <laughs> As I tell people, when you when you get a certain age, you just you just you just have experienced more. It's not that you know more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Spoken like a true Fuller Brush man. Yeah. So right. Jambo, what what did he do exactly? Biochemist. Uh, he was helping uh, with some experiments when all the chemicals got messed up. I can't remember exactly how the accident happened. Do you, Roger? When he uh, became yeah, the man I think he, he was trying to recreate like a super soldier serum. Oh, and um, and I think I think the lab was attacked or something and blew up and man thing came out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, Roger. I knew he wouldn't let that go, Roger. I knew. Not, not, I didn't say giant size though. Just man thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bob. I, I got that one just for you, and I knew you would uh, enjoy the man thing there, though. Oh yeah, who doesn't enjoy good <laughs> <man thing>? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll take a quick stab at one. We got the Flash. Oh yeah. And he was doing his uh them there's uh forensic work. Mm. Look at him go. This is a rarely seen and credited Michael Turner cover. Oh. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, cool. I like that one. Yep. Complete with them there Bonnet's book stamp. You think about that? Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. 
Did you get that stamped or it came like, like that? I purchased the book at Bonnet's bookstore and I had him hunt through his desk of, if you guys have never been to the famous golden age bookstore in Ohio in Dayton, Ohio Bonnet's books. Uh, it's, it's like walking in like there's stuff to the ceilings. It's like the wow. inner workings of a madman. Um, Cool. And in this messy desk of stuff, like it didn't have space enough. Like it looked like you ever see those games where you drop a quarter at the top and then it pushes every like you try and push five other quarters down if you had landed just right. That's what his yeah, desk point was. Pusher. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, I had him dig out an old uh, vintage stamp, and he stamped it because they don't stamp books anymore. So I had him custom stamp this for me. Cool. That was cool. Yeah, year, years from now we'll learn that Bub, on his visit to Bonnets, bought the stamp from the register and has been using that all these years. <laughs> you say that he actually he offered me to stamp it, and I declined. I yeah, said, I remember. No, thanks. That. I said nope. I said you stamp it because this is the guy's grandson. This is the owner was the owner grandson, uh, who now owns it, of course. And uh, also, he had did mention that people had. Uh, not anymore, but it used to few several years back, people would ask to buy the stamp off him and he always just refused, but he had all the original stamps still and never sold one. Even the ones that were dried out, he still kept them. So, mm. yeah, but he said people, people would ask him to sell them and he always felt like they would try and counterfeit them. So he said, no, there you go. Mm. So them dare flash a Roo. And DS Comics wants to show well, Wolverine didn't Wolverine was Wolverine during the day and night, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean he was a good drifter, so he would he didn't really hold down a day job per se. So I mean you would know better than me, but yeah, I mean I think that's Wolverine right there. Honestly. <laughs> well, well, he, he, he was never a mercenary. No? He he was right? a special agent for the Canadian government for a while. Before. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess he was a secret service type person, you know, special forces yeah, yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah, so. he was I guess a, that he, he was a problem solver for the Canadian government. Yes. I'm with you on that. Let's see who else. Ooh, I was thinking I couldn't find it, but I mean, what do you think? I mean, Batman, his he's a detective. Isn't that funny that his superhero job is the same as other people's day job? Like he, he dressed up well, to be a regular job, to have a regular job the rest of the well, time. Well, yeah, he he, he, he would help out the police with his detective skills, which were way better than any of those fools that worked in Gotham, apparently. How presumptuous. Well, <laughs> they never caught anybody, except Batman is the only one who ever caught them. There's Batman uh, battling the dreaded trouser snake, I believe it's called. Let's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Tavio, oh, man. Tell us what we're seeing that Jambo, uh, that Jambo trouser snake special. Show it off. <laughs> Get it up close to the camera. Yeah, he's battling the big Tavio, man. You just don't see these things very often, and for a good yeah. reason. Yeah, coming out of a pair of khakis looks like that's something. <laughs> Oh, you gotta love those those Silver Age Batman's, man. Just so, so his day job so was cool. being a billionaire. Slash Playboy, I guess. Oh, right? the yeah. Oh my. And Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know yeah. if I call that a job. That's more like you're, you know, you you inherited the, the money, you know. So. <laughs> well, uh, he. It depends. Some iterations had him working, working at Wayne Tech, right? Yeah, but his his father was the one who really made the money, and then he was the beneficiary of that. Yeah, I don't think he ever actually worked. For them, he just used the resources. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't think he ever put in any time working for uh, Wayne. <laughs> yeah. So you're it's saying he not, wasn't a good employee? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like Tony Stark. You know, what his father did start the company, but Tony Stark had a lot of innovations. I don't remember Bruce Wayne really having that much input into his company, other than you know, as a figurehead. Unless you guys know something I don't. No, that's, I think it was just uh, he inherited the company and he just sort of let the management run it and he never really got involved with the company. But he would pilfer resources 
I mean, I don't pilfer their, he owns the company, but he would <laughs> use their resources, their space. They, he had, they have different properties and stuff he would use for different things. Um, and yeah, he just would use the resources towards his detective work. Um, so yeah, I mean, his day job was really like detecting at night, but he did detective work during the day, but, um, yeah, his superhero really, his superhero act is really his day job. Yeah. Yeah. Now look at Bruce is a bum. That's not very nice. Nights of old. In Canada. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh man. You guys are terrible. What about uh uh Adam Strange? Oh, Didn't I don't he, know. Wasn't he a uh what the hell was he? What wasn't he an archaeologist? Yes, yes, he was an archaeologist, archaeologist. <laughs> yep. Wow, and that's then, awesome. I did not know that. And then later, he became the inventor of the self-gas-powered engine. He, just, <laughs> he became the champion of RAN. <laughs> yes, he did. That's not RON. Or RON. RAN, RON, whatever. I, I don't know. I, do you I don't know how to pronounce that either. I have no idea. <laughs> I always call it RON. <laughs> I don't know. We need. Where's Knights of Old? Knights of Old, what is it? He's a cattle rustler. He wasn't a cattle rustler. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you're oh. saying he invented the jetpack, Bob? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> International. I'm sound. still waiting for my my flying car and stuff from the Jetsons when I seen him when I was a kid. I was like, man, that's gonna be so much fun. Yeah, I think yep. you're right. We we need those. I've also yes. been waiting for the conveyor belt that will comb my hair and brush my teeth at the same time. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, the flying the flying cars, along with all the other tech in Blade Runner, that movie was set in 2019. So, yep. man, yep. So That's they right. owe us. So yeah, somebody's slacking. Years behind. Somebody's not doing their job, is what I think. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. we have a self-driving car, but that's about it. <laughs> I mean, I drive myself in a car. That's awful close, is all I'm saying, Roger. <laughs> not a big advancement. Well, okay, <laughs> if you right. say so. All right, what are we? Are we surely we're not already back to Roger? I mean, yeah, Roger, what do you got for us? <laughs> well, you know, I just figured we'd pick out a few guys here and see what you know what we what we got. You know, see what what you guys think. Um, uh, you know, Hawkeye. What was Hawkeye? He was a shiftless bum. <laughs> okay, what did he do before he was a shiftless bum? He was aspiring to be a shiftless bum. <laughs> 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 Oh man! Come on, you guys can figure mm. this one out. Think, think of his skill set. Where, where would that work? He was a carny. He was an yeah, archer that's at, it. at the carnival. That's it. Yep, there that's you it. Go. You got it. You got it. you got it. Good one. Good. Good this guy. is this should be easy. Dazzler. She was a rollerblading pop star. <laughs> yep, she was a, a lounge singer essentially. Yep, that's yes. right. I like to lounge when I sing as well. Go on. This is fun. <laughs> All right. Winning, by the way, Scott, Scott Lang, Ant Man. He was a burglar. Okay, true, but he after that, what was his uh, occupation? Then he was Ant Man. Gotcha. Nope. <laughs> uh, worked for a security company. Ah, you got it. Oh, Bob is, Bob is good. Oh, he was a, he was a prisoner, too. Bob At least good. in the movie, he was. Hey, <laughs> man, <laughs> you, you know, every dog has his day. Today's his Bubs. Man. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right dog mag says singer area 51 says dancer and a crook because all the dancers take mike's money <laughs> right 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 uh, okay, right, okay. luke cage he was a professional naval model a bouncer that's what i meant mm, i don't think he was ever a bouncer that i recall he was a walnut cracker <laughs> no no no, no kind of cracker. All right. No. What do you think, DS? The DS. We need your yeah. help. I I think he was a hero for hire. That's right. A professional mm -hmm. superhero. That yeah. was his occupation. I mean, that's the that's title of his book. It's that right. That was it. Yeah. Was before he got his hire? powers, though. Hmm. Didn't what he have was to he doing before rent? he got his powers? Right. He got his powers in prison because he was set up by uh by a. Uh, by a gang member of his, you know, friend of his, mm -hmm. but, but his occupation was exactly that. 
He was a superhero for hire. He was the only superhero in the yellow pages. Nice. Is that why he wore yellow? <laughs> I can't say. I don't know. Why, are you I sworn to secrecy? Are you part of his? I, no, uh, I, 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 listen, I, I'm not. Street? I'm not. Yeah, I don't have all the info on Luke Cage Hero for Hire. I just know that that's what it said in the comics. Okay. I think Roger's holding out on us. Uh, what about Rom? Was he? Uh, they had speculated earlier. Someone said he was a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. I swear. Nope. Somebody said, "Whoever said you were a toaster, put it back in the comments." I don't want to scroll all the way up. Well, Rom, Rom is initially a toy. Rom was a toy before it was a comic book. True. Um, mm. And he's not earthly, I believe. Nope. Um, but I don't know a lot about the comic version of Rom. But I, it's based on the toy, and it was a toy first. Um, but I don't really don't know much more than that about Rom. So, well, we, so we don't have clarification on whether or not he was a toaster. No, he was not a toaster. He had, he did have uh, some weapons like a neutralizer and all this. But yeah, but hood or none of them toasted. Yeah, <laughs> none of them toasted. He, he he actually volunteered on his planet to become a cyborg so that he could get rid of the dire wraiths who were about to, you know, overcome his people. Did you say to get rid of diarrhea? Hey, you know, I never thought of it that way, but they're pretty close to that. <laughs> they, they're kind of like these, they're brown blobs. So yeah, <laughs> not too, not too, not too far from that, but not too far. All right. Look, now we found out either Sly said it earlier or he's taking credit. Now Sly had the toaster comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doctor Strange was a doctor. What about the guy on the bottom right down there? Silver Surfer. Yeah, what was his day job before he, he became? He was a herald. Yeah, before that, he was a herald. He was a uh, he was in the herald training program <laughs> for for young junior heralds of America. What, what what was his profession on Zen Law? He was a librarian, wasn't he? Scientist, right? Yeah, he was a scientist. Correct. Had, he was in charge of the library, though, the scientific archives. Not that I know of, no. Well, I was trying to slip one in on you. <laughs> Not that I know of. Much like happened to Luke Cage in prison. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, he, that's, yeah. oh, you know, I think I think Area 51 is actually right. He was also an astronomer. Yeah, yeah he, he, he's an astronomer. He, he was looking up and, uh, and saw Galactus and all that. Yeah, I think he's right about that, too. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Good job, everybody. Use your wrench on me. <laughs> Look, what a people. It was a dude. I bet Use your was. wrench on me. Did we get everybody? I think we got everybody. Uh, yeah. I mean, we already knew Spider-Man, photographer. I mean, later on, he, he was also a part-time um, uh, instructor at college. And he's also a, a pretty gifted physicist. Um, Who, Spider-Man? Yeah, he invented those webs, those web sling, you know, the, the web shooters. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't just stop there and become a billionaire. <laughs> you know, Isn't that's right. Available I, for everyone. Now you're a billionaire, and you sit back and and hang out. He with always Mary had Jane these money problems, but yet he was genius level intellect. He could have patented who knows how many things and had exactly. no problems. But yeah, but again, think, we didn't want Stan Lee did not want that aspect of him to be. I think more you know, recently, dominant. and you know, me and Roger wouldn't really know because we don't read moderns. But I think more recently, Spider Man, Peter Parker, did own his own company, um, and was pretty rich. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you hmm. go. Yeah, so you could have bailed Aunt May out of the slums a long time ago, right? <laughs> I think they lived in Queens. I wouldn't say that's the slums. How long has it been since you were in Queens? <laughs> uh, it's been a long time that's true <laughs> it's been about 30 years yeah i used to i used to spend some time hanging out in queens uh and it was it was all right i mean i stayed away from batteries where we which hung out but um queens is all right it's a cool it's got cool neighborhoods um mm -hmm. brooklyn and queens both are really cool place to hang out if you feel like you're not really in new york city in a lot of those neighborhoods they're very sort of yep. independent sort of neighborhoods. Um, the Bronx, eh, not really my favorite section in New York. But Queens and Brooklyn are pretty nice, depending where you go. I thought those are cool places to hang. Well, yeah, I grew up in the northern Bronx, uh, <laughs> pretty close to Queens. and But yet I had a girlfriend that lived 
Actually, one time I was going to tell a story about one girlfriend I had in Queens, but I'll tell a story about a different girlfriend I had in Queens. She lived in Far Rockaway, and the Ooh. name says it all. You had to go. It took me almost two hours to get to and from her place once. Wow. <laughs> once. <laughs> Yeah. That was those long term, those long distance relationships didn't help, didn't work for you, though. That was it, man. It was like four trains, three buses, took 10 bucks. And honestly, I mean, by the time you spend 10 bucks to see a girl once, it's that's uh, <laughs> you look, you know, I got comics to buy, I got hot dogs to eat. I'm sorry, <laughs> this isn't working out. <laughs> We're a very large, actually. Yes, yeah, so uh, the other story I was going to tell was a girl in uh, Queens as well, she was in Astoria. And it was big Russian community there. Everyone literally spoke Russian. The signs were all in Russian. And then uh -huh. you'd walk like four blocks and everything turned like Pakistani. Uh -huh. And then it was Turkish. And it was uh -huh. like the signs would just keep changing, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, But you could get a, a great stereo for like 10 bucks, you know. And you just you take it home and the parts would be rattling. You'd have to take it apart <laughs> and put all the pieces back together. It was great. I never had so many sharp uh, VCRs in all my life. So good stuff. Yep. The good old sharp. Good old sharp. It was so bad too because when they fake printed the name sharp on it, sometimes it didn't totally stick. So it looked like one of those temporary tattoos after you wore it for about six hours. It'd be like just bits and pieces of it left and some oh, film man. flapping off. <laughs> oh, boy. Good yep. stuff. We, we had those guys in, the, in Miami too. They, they hung out in the garment district down there in Miami. Same guys. Yep. Yep. Come here, friend. I say a good deal. <laughs> what did they tell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were always your buddy too, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, big yeah. Yes. Uh, they they would have two hundred dollar price tags, and then they come over here. Ten ten dollar. <laughs> yeah. Ten dollar. And they have a going out of business sale for ten years. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> going out of business. Yeah. Everything must go. All sales <laughs> final. And then you walk in, you spend your ten dollars, and you'd leave with this piece of electronic <laughs> crap that didn't work for about a week. And you bring it back. Sorry, all sales final, but we'll sell you another one. Oh yeah, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> New improved model. Absolutely, yeah. It's a two and the the point <laughs> would be written in like crayon. You know, thanks, buddy. <laughs> this is great stuff. Little stickers be peeling off. <sighs> all right, we've had too much fun. Uh, we need to uh, we need to wrap, wrap it up so we can all get to our day jobs, which is I think for DS just making more comments <laughs> on uh, YouTube videos. Uh, Jambo has opened the floodgates to trades. Uh, I wonder if the same thing will happen to you. I started getting Jambo. I started getting a bunch of uh, trade requests on Instagram and stuff. People saying, "Oh, I didn't know you do trades. What do you got?" And I'll tell you what I need. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll I'm for it as long as it works in my benefit. You know? Yeah. I got some great stuff from you, man. I appreciate it. That was really cool. Yeah, man. No problem. I didn't know how you'd feel about the Bern Hogarth. Uh, oh, I thought it was extremely I cool. Yeah, I like that. Sword and sorcery and anatomy. And, you know, he kind of invented <laughs> all that crap. So that was cool. Yeah, that was cool. That's, that the, was uh, that's cool. the Horseman of the Apocalypse by, by Hogarth. Pretty, pretty. Oh, that was uh, cool. Very nice. Uh, fun stuff, man. You, of course, you blew it out of the water with the stuff you sent me. So who knows what I'll get from Roger. Some old moldy books and DS. These guys, I tell you. <laughs> good good stuff. Good community. You guys are awesome. All right. We got to yeah. get rolling on. Uh, DS, you got anything coming up on your channel? Any rants? Have you not been done dirty by anyone recently? I mean, I'm missing these late <laughs> afternoon rant videos. No, you know, here's what happened. I have some good topics to do some sort of rant discussion on. And the last couple of weeks, we've been short at work. We've lost a couple people. We're losing somebody else. So I've been picking up a lot of extra time at my day job, which I'm not happy about. But, you know, that's an obligation and a commitment that I have. So, um, yeah, I have usually have been working like 20 hours a week to 25 hours a week there. I've been working 40. So I'm working like full-time hours at what I'm trying to make a part-time job at this point. So that's taking a lot of time away. Um, and then a lot of those, I work in the restaurant industry, as you know. So a lot of those shifts are like double shifts where it's like open to close in the restaurant. And then, you know, it's exhausting. It honestly is. So that has taken up 
days where I've planned to do stuff on my channel. And that's why I haven't for the last like month and a half. Um, but this week has opened up a little bit for me. So I'm off tomorrow I'm off Thursday, I'm off Saturday. I've got several days off coming up. So yeah, I'm going to try to do something. I would like to do some, some content and get something back out there. Yeah. Nice. And, and which superhero has been getting you off? Has it been daredevil <laughs> or she Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Daredevil has because I am still salty because I had a 5.5 of a Daredevil one at the end of last year. Oh. And I'll tell you, he got one over on me because I got rid of it for like two grand. Oh, and it's wow. Like freaking $8,000 book now. So mm. still salty. So I would say if I had to pick one, Bob, it'd be Daredevil's the one that got me off. Everything is more expensive <laughs> right now, though. I mean, everything is yeah. gone, if it seems like. Yeah, it's that, that X Men you showed just shocked the heck out of me. Yeah, that yeah, crazy. that's crazy. Yeah, there was an X Men one that sold last night. It was a three point five, creamed off white pages on Heritage. It sold for nineteen thousand two hundred. <laughs> now it did have on the label. It said Jack Kirby written on first page in pen. Oh, hey, green label? No, it wasn't a green label because it was only a three point five. So three point five. Yeah. Writing on a page as a defect would be way higher than a three five anyway. So that added some to the price. But I mean, what's how much does that add? Doesn't add ten grand to the price. Surely not. Five grand. I mean, a Especially unverified. Bill, but I mean twenty thousand yeah. dollars for a three five, regardless of the signature. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there are any verified Jack Kirby signatures. So. No, they're those are tough signatures to find. And occasionally somebody will find one and they'll buy a lot or buy some books and they're going through them and you'll see Jack Kirby signed on the bottom of the splash page. Those are always awesome when somebody shows it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as like a verified signature, that's uh, very, very difficult. I don't I don't recall seeing any. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think he passed away before I think any verifications occurred. Well, I think there's a CBCS one I saw not too long ago. They'll verify it. Right, right. Yeah, that's post yeah. post mortem. Yeah, but even still, most of the Jack Kirby signatures that I see are just people that find it when they get a book and they open it up and there on the splash page says Jack Kirby. Yeah, those are the best yeah. ones when they yeah, find yeah. them by accident like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I, I don't got a Mike Zek like that, but not Kirby. Yeah, and the Kirby's there's not really like covers signed by him. He always signed on a splash yeah. page. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's what that little space down there on the front page was for. He said. Yeah. That's, That's old school. For signatures. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Always check your books before you ditch them in lots. I'll tell you, one of the things I plan to stumble on someday is a Jack Kirby signature on a splash page, and I'm still hoping to stumble on a Star Wars uh, 35 cent variant. Wow. Oh, wow. One day I'll stumble on one. Well, <laughs> it's possible. It's possible, yeah. but you're not really that close to a – Variant city, you have to go to over to Massachusetts for that. Yeah, I well, know. I mean, I could go to Ohio. That's close-ish, I guess. Yeah, that's sort of. Let's move around a lot, though. They, they, anything with that long of a history, it could have traveled to him. I could have. Yeah, could have. Could have. Yeah, it's possible. All right, yeah. you got Golden Guys tomorrow night, right? Are you going to be on for that show? Yeah. So let me tell you about Golden Guys tomorrow night. Comic Core, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, uh, one of our members scored a phenomenal pulp collection. Uh, mm. I don't know, yep. probably a thousand pulps. Um, and a lot of heavy, as far as pulps go, a lot of like the AF-15 level type stuff of pulps are in there. Oh, man. Wow. It's a massive collection. Uh, most of the rest of us on that show have seen pictures and we've talked to him a little bit. But we're going to take a look at that tomorrow night and just he's going to showcase the stuff he's found in that we're just going to discuss it as he goes. And I really don't know what to expect other than I've seen a couple pictures of some really massive pulp grails of multiples, three or four copies. Oh, this so nice. like really good, like early stuff going back to even the late 1800s all the way through to the fifties. Wow. So a really, wow. really great pulp collection. So we'll be looking at that. If you like pulps or just cool, funky art, uh, check that out tomorrow night, Comic Core 10 p.m. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to watching on the rewind at yep. 11 a.m. Uh, Wednesday morning. <laughs> yep, me too. I'll be asleep. <laughs> but yeah, That's I'll watch. my rewind time. It's a great rewind show because they don't interact with the chat very much, which is awesome. Nope. So I love those are my favorites to rewind. So, uh, mm -hmm. all right. What do you got uh, coming up on your Dim Dare channel there, uh, Roger? Um, 
On Thursday, I have a, uh, one of my special videos. I'm going to do a video on the long lost transition comics that the Legion of Superheroes were that transitioned them from the Silver to the Bronze Age. Okay. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I got, I may have another special video coming up of some things I've received, pr prize winning, things like that, but that would be it. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. We enjoy that. All right. Uh, who's, who's uh, Jambo? Hey, <laughs> now he already put out his video for this month. <laughs> I actually have another one coming up pretty soon. I've got a bunch of uh, Planet of the Apes uh, comics and stuff that I Ooh. got in just recently. Nice. And uh, I always liked that, man. It was like some really cool stuff. It was like the Star Wars before Star Wars, you know. You got it. You got so, it. Very yeah, cool. I'll be putting a video out on that this week, hopefully. You got the whole set? No, I don't have all of them. I don't have the whole oh. set yet, but I got, okay. you know, a lot of the key issues and then, uh, you know, cool. some other odds and ends to go with it. Do you have, do you have this run? Uh, no, I don't have that run. I don't have the, the ones I have is all Marvel. Yeah. This one is really Star Trek Planet of the Apes. It's great. I'll have to check that out. That looks so really I read cool. the whole run, but I, but I kept, this was one of the variants and yeah. I kept this one just as to commemorate the run. But if you get a chance, read that run it's it's really really good does it have taylor or any of the other uh, original characters in yeah that? It's, it's original for both oh okay it's very so, cool. well, not taylor not taylor because the uh humans are are the star trek characters. okay apes. Oh, okay it has the same apes okay so, okay. Yeah, check that out when you get a chance. Yeah, definitely. That's something to look that. for for sure. Yeah. All right, go on. What else you got going on? You're gonna have a whole second video. Look, this is this is a travesty. Go ahead. <laughs> That's about it. I mean, I, I've got some Golden Age, but I'm gonna wait and get a few more of those together before I do another Golden Age haul. But uh, yeah, the Planet of the Apes thing should be coming out this week, I think. Nice. We're looking forward to it. All right, that sounds good. And who's left? Is it just me? Just you. Ah, what do I got coming up? Um, well, I got a two more hauls I'm working on, I think. Yes. Yeah. So I have two hauls to show, um, comic hauls. Then I actually did another one of those Power Records videos. Oh, cool. Based on our Power Records that I picked up last week. So I'll be showing that and, um, and you know, playing the record for everybody. And I'll just tell you now. You won't hurt my feelings if you can't make it through the whole thing. It is horrible. <laughs> it is Way to beyond promote it, bad. <laughs> Good promotion, man. <laughs> Look, there you go. I'm telling you. I mean, it's quirky and it's fun to listen to, but the story, like, here's what I kept thinking. I kept thinking I'm. For, it doesn't include the book, so it's one of those that's audio only, right? Mm -hmm. it never can, never was issued with a comic. So it's all dialogue and it's like, Oh my gosh, the plot is so ridiculously bad. The voice <laughs> acting is terrible. The sound effects cut in and out with the voice. It's just bad in every way. It's almost so bad. It's good, but it's really just so bad. It's bad. And uh, so I thought I'd record that and, and save that for prosperity. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to I can't wait to see that. I cannot I wait to enjoy. Yeah, it's, it's. I used to have. I used to play those on my little bitty record player when I was a kid. Oh, look at everybody's just picturing little Roger with a little bitty record player. <laughs> you got it. And That's we'll be back next week. Play. No faces comic chat, and I guess in about a week I'll be should be on Comigories if I don't get bumped again. So. Nope. They're going to make a special episode just for me that's not on a Monday. Wow. So I can participate. Cool. So I want to thank nice. everybody involved with that who's who's making this very special. Uh, so, I'm, so, I'm, so I'm promoting this that I might get bumped from my own special episode. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that would be tragic. Tragic yeah. stuff. I know. I know. Just well deserved and always ill timed. Uh, so anyway, so that's what I got coming on on my channel. And then I might do a couple of more collectibles hauls and things like that. Cause buying comics right now is insane. Um, if you're trying to hunt keys. So instead I'm kind of going after run fillers and collecting stuff. No one else is looking at. Mm -hmm. I know. Are you, are you giving that to me or was that? No. Uh, do you have that one? 
I do not. I've lost out on it two or three times. All right. Well, here's your chance. <laughs> Starting bid, 10 cents, four days. Even yeah. I can afford that. I'll have it on watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, <laughs> just got listed, so it's worth watching. Um, no, it just got like, relisted. Well, I don't know if it got relisted, but it's Yeah, complete. I know, because I was I had that same book on search, because I remember the top right corner having that fold-up and uh, the hole in it, yeah. and it didn't sell. It had a minimum bid, I think, of 150 or something like that, and then it didn't sell. All right. Well, then it will go cheaper than that probably. So, yeah, keep an eye on it. It should. Yeah, it should. Yep. Wait a minute. No, I think I bid on that and lost. I don't have to look. There's some shenanigans going on. I'm going to check on that. Yeah. Well, maybe he didn't pay. Maybe the, the buyer didn't pay. Well, that's what I'm going to check. See if it's from the same seller or if it's from the person who won it and they're using the same pictures oh. and selling it before they even get it in hand. Oh, mm -hmm. shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's sometimes there's shenanigans. It could be a show bidder that, and then he got stuck with it because it sold for less than he wanted to sell it for. Yep, see, told you, 150. Well, 142. And it's the same one. Yeah, it's the same seller. And it's the same exact book. And same so pictures and everything. Maybe the guy didn't pay or something, and it got relisted. But the seller has 100% feedback. So, yeah, worth watching. Yeah, I, I, was, I had a losing bid on that book, I'm proud to say. Tom <laughs> 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 Fuller abounds. You know All it. Right. Good deal. All right, guys. Let's, let's hop off here. That's what we all, all right. got going on. Uh, let's see. I know, I know everybody's sign off. Roger wants to tell us to be blessed and be back, but we're going to let him say it. Everybody be blessed and be back next week Wonderful. for the No Faces Chat. Ooh, nice. I like the extra. DS wants to tell everyone to do their homework, and uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, do your homework, and in these crazy market times, make sure that you're going with your gut and not just going with prices and GPA because you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Some stuff's worth paying up for and some stuff's not, but use your gut and do your homework. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Jambo, among other things, my favorite thing is he wants to tell us to subscribe. Subscribe. I don't have no picture tonight, but I will tell everybody I, I appreciate their time. Yes. And, <laughs> cool. and what else do you want to tell them? Subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Betty can say it. Here she yes, is. Yes, she can. She doesn't have a little uh, whatnot subscribe. above her. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was probably about 25 before I realized she had bangs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> All right, everyone. I just want to tell everyone to remember to uh, read a comic. And, of course, don't apologize for the glare, we'll catch you next week on uh, this same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, good night, everybody, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.